Now for Global Business Updates. Rotus Udiri joins us. Good morning, Rotus. Good morning, Dr. Pasi. Good morning, Vimbai. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Good morning all our viewers out What's there. Up? It is Friday, thank goodness. Um, Finally. So, <laughs> I'm telling you, we've got some chess pieces that have been moving around uh, the uh, board of the Federal Reserve in the United States, which is where we're going to start. Adriana Kugler is a labor economist. I think she's a PhD, but she's a, a labor economist as a member of the VOTE FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee board that votes on, on rates decisions. And she resigned. Um, she actually didn't votes in the last meeting that they had where there were two dissenters and the Fed decided to hold rates. She said that there was a personal reason why she couldn't attend the meeting. And then after that, she announced her resignation. So there's an open seat now that has to be filled. Now, her term ends in January of uh, 2026. Uh, it's already August. The year is almost gone. Um, pre President Trump then puts a post on Truth Social. For this past week, he's been flirting with who he's going to um, appoint. So he says there, it's my great honor to announce I've chosen Dr. Stephen Moran, who is the current chair of the Council of economic advisors to serve to that vacated seat until January the 31st of 2026. And in the meantime, we're going to continue to search for a permanent replacement. You know, it says Stephen has a PhD in economics from Harvard University. Uh, he served with distinction in my first term. He served in the Trump term in first Trump term in 2017. So, so he's a confidant and a, a loyalist, you know. Um, so Miran is an interesting guy. Um, he has this thing called the Manhattan Institute papers that he published uh, not too long ago. He is for less Fed intervention. He doesn't really weigh much on monetary policy. Yeah. You know, he's, he's in stop. Well, here's the other thing. He has to be confirmed by the Senate, and it is not believed that the confirmation will happen in time before the next meeting uh, in September. But I think he could be at the next meeting um, after that. But he's, yeah, he's one of those folks who is, uh, we expect to be pretty dovish when he gets there. Meanwhile, this is a, um, Christopher Waller, who is another member of the board. He's someone that we highlighted after those terrible labor market numbers came out that led to the firing of the head of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. He's been calling, he's been calling attention to the fact that there are cracks in the U.S. labor market. He was one of the dissenters uh, that uh, voted against a hold and wanted to actually see a cut. Um, and he's, the guy, he's been pretty spot on with some of his calls with respect to the, uh, to, to the, the, the U.S. I think he was appointed to the board in 2020, uh, although his, his Senate confirmation was very close. I it was 48 to 47 or so. But all of a sudden, betting markets are saying that he is likely um, favored to be the next chair of the Federal Reserve when Jerome Powell's um, tenure runs out uh, in uh, May of, of next year. So all eyes now on the next uh, Federal Reserve. The more Fed governors are coming out now and saying that they, they sh their, 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 their language is leaning towards a, a rate cut. So now we've gone from 47% chances of a rate cut in September to, I think it, was, it went from 60, sorry, to 40. Now it's jumped to 90. So with what's been happening in the labor market and all this, I think the market is looking at you know, political interference in the Fed. It seems like um, the board now might actually vote on a rate cut uh, in September. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Meanwhile, um, on tariffs, I, I saw a really good interview with the head of a supermarket chain um, that essentially was talking about the impact of um, tariffs on supermarket owners who have to import, you know, shrimp, bananas, and things from other parts of the of the world. This is Stu Leonard. He's in Connecticut, and here he is talking about uh, the. Uh, I think he was talking about shrimp, and you know what the cost could possibly be. Here he is. Like for instance, we don't know what to do as far as buying goes right now. You know, a couple of things that that are out there is, is any tariffs from China which has to do with things like these aluminum pans that we get from China and ah. just switched our production to the United States now uh, to buy aluminum pans so we're not buying from China. And the other big one that hit us today was, was this. India, India grows most of the shrimp in the world right now. Wow. And now this, wh what do we do now? This just got 50, was, is it 50% or 25%? I don't even know. And that is the confusion, right? Because you, a lot of folks are like, okay, you've, you said 25% for this. The 50%, the extra 25% was because of Russia. And I know there's me, so Trump is supposed to be meeting with Putin. But businesses, now, and this is part of why the labor market is frozen in the United States. A lot of businesses are not really hiring anymore because of the, they're not sure 
how much are these particular items here and there are going to cost them. Now, going forward, he was asked, okay, whether it's 25% or 50%, what does that do to your profit margins? And here he is actually, you know, pretty much explaining what has been, uh, been, been forecast, that um, importers in the US and exporters in other nations are actually deciding to split the tariffs so that they don't pass the cost on to the final consumer. But how long can that last? Here's where he was explaining it. Nobody knows really what's happening with the tariffs. Most of our importers have said, we'll split it with you. So you take a 15 percent, uh, for instance, on, on bananas. They don't grow in the United States. OK, I can't right. I can't buy yeah. them here. 15 percent tariff. We've said we'll split it seven and a half, seven and a half percent. OK, right now I'm eating it. We haven't raised prices. Uh, but, you know, your, your guest who you had on prior to me had a great point. He said, wait till the holidays come. So mm -hmm. if, if we sell one pound of shrimp today, we'll sell probably 20 pounds of shrimp for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Uh, okay. So that's going to be the big impact right now. Um, our, our importer that we have, which is, by the way, just a family business. This isn't a big corporation or anything. He, he told me this morning, I talked to him, he said, you know, I got to spend $200,000 to fill up a container of shrimp coming from India. He said, now yeah. at 50 percent tariff, it's 300,000. And, wow. and he said, our family's got to put that money up ahead of time. So the thing is, this inventory front loading that we've seen, where they are trying to quickly get these ideas, there's only, after a while, your inventory is going to come down. So at that point, you, you have to buy new items now. And then these other tariffs that have now been announced now hit those prices. So everyone is going to be, what, CPI? And PPI for the U.S. I think come out next week. Although still, that's a bit of a lagging indicator. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. To technology now, um, OpenAI has announced GPT-5, the latest model. Here's Sam Altman with the announcement. Two months ago, we launched ChatGPT, and since then, it has become the default way that people use AI. In that first week, a million people tried it out, and we thought that was pretty incredible. But now. About 700 million people use ChatGPT every week and increasingly rely on it to work, to learn, for advice, to create, and much more. Today, finally, we're launching GPT-5. GPT-5 is a major upgrade over GPT-4 and a significant step along our path to AGI. Now, today, we're going to show you some incredible demos. We'll talk about some performance metrics. But the important point is this. We think you will love using GPT-5 much more than any previous AI. It is useful, it is smart, it is fast, and it's intuitive. GPT-3 was sort of like talking to a high school student. There were flashes of brilliance, lots of annoyance, uh, but people started to use it and get some value out of it. With GPT-4, maybe it was like talking to a college student. Real intelligence, real utility. But with GPT-5, now it's like talking to an expert, a legitimate PhD-level expert in anything, any area you need, on demand that can help you with whatever your goals are. Anyway, while that clip was playing, we're debating that Guardian front page, right, as to whether or not synthetic hair really does cause fertility issues or cancer. You can ask a PhD level AI like GPT-5 and to give you your answer. And then, um, that's what he was saying. And then um, the Nigerian Stock Exchange experienced some dips this, this week, but it's still up 29.5% so far this year. So invest, invest, invest. Okay, Rogers, we understand that there is no time for any chat. Yeah. But Trump, he has fired the CEO of Intel. He, no, he's he, calling for him to be resigned, to resign, well, not fired. Well, still have to go to Senate yeah, yeah. for confirmation. But he has already said he has to go. And that's why he's also tampering uh, with the Federal Reserve. No, Intel? Senate hearing for Intel, Intel CEO? No, for Intel. No. no, for Federal Reserve, uh, Senate hearing. Okay, the, the Intel. Man, okay, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You yeah. okay. yeah. are saying company. he's calling yeah. for it. Yeah. But he says he's been sad because they receive federal funding, you know, to, uh, to the rate of billions. Right. Right. Although it's unusual to interfere with yeah, the private uh, exactly. He says he's conflicted. He's doing business. Ties to China. You know, but China. the TikTok that has ties to China is still it's being still used. You also have the new man in in uh, the federal board, he yeah. has to be confirmed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The group Kruger, the woman, mm. no, she's a tenured professor mm. at Georgetown University. University. I heard she's going back there. So yeah. she's going back. Yeah. It's not just that she has a PhD. Yeah, yeah. 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 In any case, we'll see how it goes. Yeah.